What's up YouTube? Have you ever wanted to learn a fitting photo in just five minutes? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator, and today we're going to introduce you to a fitting photo in just five minutes. Now, before we get started, I just wanna make sure that you understand that you can't actually learn everything there is to know about a fitting photo in five minutes. So if after this introduction, you're interested in diving deeper, make sure that you go ahead and check out my courses linked in the description below. If you do go ahead and take one of those courses on Gumroad, make sure that you use code YT15 to get it for just $15. Now let's first talk about what Affinity Photo is. Affinity Photo is a raster editor, very similar to Adobe Photoshop, a program that lots and lots of people know. Now, Affinity Photo is part of the Affinity Suite along with the Affinity Apps Designer and Publisher. So, Affinity Photo will be used primarily for editing photos and doing photo compositions, although it can do some graphic design work as well, but most of that is best left to Affinity Designer. Affinity Photo is available on Mac, Windows and iPad for a one-time purchase. On Mac and Windows, it's going to cost you $69.99 and on iPad, it's going to cost you $18.49. Now let's dive in and actually look at the program. All right, the first thing that I want to do is introduce you to the interface of a free photo. This is very similar to what you would find in Photoshop. So on the left-hand side, we have all of our tools. This is how we're going to do the actions that we want to do on our photos or documents here. At the top, you're going to find a very important toolbar which has a lot of quick actions. You can do things like turn snapping on and off, handle some of the quick things that you might want to do, but really important up here are these personas. Personas will actually change the tools that you find here, and one of these in particular is important. This is the develop persona which is used for raw photos. So we're not going to get too much into that today, but if you're ever confused about what's going on and it seems like your tools have disappeared, chances are you've just changed your persona. Right below that, is the contextual toolbar. This toolbar changes depending on what you have selected. So if I change from my arrow to my eyedropper here, you can see that the options change, as well as if I change to my selection brush, there's going to be different things. So if you're ever missing anything up here, chances are you're just on the wrong tool. The next really important section is over here on the right-hand side. These are the studios. These are going to be the same as your panels in Photoshop. And lastly, I want you to know where the document canvas is. So right here is the document canvas. You can zoom in and out by holding Option and scrolling, and you can pan around by holding down spacebar to get your hand tool and move it around. So those are the really important things you need to know. If you're on your selection tool, you can select objects on the canvas like this text here. Okay, let's go in and let's learn the really key concepts that you have to know to do photo compositing in Affinity Photo. The first thing that you need to know about is layers. So this is our layers studio right here, and it is really important because your layers stack up and determine how your document actually looks. You can turn these off and on with this little dot. So if I want to turn off where it says adventures, I can just do that by clicking that little dot and turning it off. You can also see that there have been an effects applied to this. So that's why there's an FX there on that. So layers, super important, really critical. How they stack will determine what you can see. So if I take my layer with my night on it and I go ahead and I drag that down below my background layer, you can't see him anymore. I'll hit Command Z to undo that. The next key concepts also involve layers. So there are special layers called adjustment layers that actually change things. So if I come down here to this vibrance adjustment layer, that's turned off, you can see. If I turn it on, you can see that I've actually sucked all of the color out of that with that adjustment layer. So everything beneath it loses all of its color, which in this case is the background layer. If I want to adjust that, I can click on this diamond shape here because that's the vibrance icon and I could bring that color back by bringing my saturation back up. That is adjustment layers. Adjustment layers can handle lots of the things that you would normally think of as photo editing. Next, we wanna talk about selections. Selection tools are like this brush over here. This is your brush selection tool and it's honestly the most useful. It lets you select particular parts of an image, but you need to make sure you're on that layer. So let me change to this girl layer here and zoom in. And if I want to select her eye, I could just click on it and you can see it's selected too much. So holding down option, I can unselect part of that. And I can change my brush size using my bracket keys, make it bigger or smaller. So this is really, really important because you could just come in here and you could just adjust her eye by applying an adjustment layer just to that selection. Selections are really critical once you start getting into masks. Let me undo that selection by hitting Command D. Masks are really, really important concept in any kind of photo compositing because they allow you to hide part of an image. So you can see I have masks applied to this layer here. That's mask one and mask two. If I turn them off, you can see I bring in the rest of that photo. So I'm hiding that whole background behind her with this mask. I'm also fading her out using a mask. So if I turn that off, you can see she comes in really strong. 
Otherwise, she's fading out. So the important thing to remember about masks is that black conceals and white reveals. So wherever you have black on a mask, it's going to hide. Wherever you have white, it's going to shine through. So let me go ahead and click on this one so that you can see just where it's white, she's showing through and where it's black, it's all being hidden. So those are the four key concepts that you must understand inside of Fini Photo: Layers, adjustments, selections, and masks. And they all work together to help you make the image that you really want to. Now, some other things that you can do that you can see here are obviously add text, add effects to those text or other layers. There are also shape tools that are here as well. If you need to add some shapes, you can find those and a pen tool over here on the left hand side. Those are going to be similar to what you would find in Affinity Designer or Adobe Illustrator. There's a lot more, of course, that is contained here in Affinity Photo, but that's all we can do here in five minutes. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this quick introduction to Affinity Photo in just five minutes. Now, if you want to dive deeper and learn a lot more about Affinity Photo, go ahead and check out some of my Affinity Photo courses in the description below. Remember, if you choose to take one of those courses on Gumroad, use the code YT15 to get it for just $15. And now I want to hear from you. Jump down in the comments and let me know what excites you about Affinity Photo, what kind of things do you want to do with it, and what are some of your favorite features. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.